Okay, so this next video lecture is still the continuation of our module 1, Cost Concepts and Classifications. So we are now in the cost formulas for labor costs. Okay, so we have here the first formula for the time rate systems. So this is uh, for the earnings. Okay, so how do you compute for the earnings or salaries of a certain worker or employee? A factory employee so this is equal to number of hours work times their rate per hour or there are other bases also like number of pieces finished times uh, the rate per piece okay so but the common uh, basis is the number of uh, hours worked a second is the straight piece rate okay this is what we are talking about okay so number of units times piece per rate um, we are we have also here um, the entity can use this um, differential piece rate system. Okay, this is a from Merrick differential piece rate system. So for they can have this, uh, they can use their this um, basis. Okay, in paying their workers uh, using their efficiency. Okay, if they work for uh, eighty three percent. So, the rate will be based on the ordinary piece rate. If that is 83 to 100, so that's uh, they can have additional incentive. So, 110% of the ordinary piece rate. Another is if their efficiency of the work or the worker's efficiency is above 100%. So, again, there are a greater um, incentives that will be given like 120% or 130% of their ordinary piece rate. So this is just an example but it will depend on the management on how they rate uh, their workers. So we also have here the combination of time and piece rate. So this is the gun task and bonus system. So this is just an example. Again, uh, the entity can have their own um, unique uh, compensation system for their workers. So for this example, uh, we have there the output and payment. So if the output is below the standard, so this is just equal to the guaranteed time rate. Output, if the output is uh, equal to the standard, so they have their incentive or even above the standard. Okay, so I think this is just the same as the Merrick difference piece, but in, in here, uh, in Merrick differential price rate system, uh, what they base, uh, their basis, I mean, is on the efficiency, while under the GAN task and bonus system, uh, it also uh, based on the output. Okay, so output can also be translated into their efficiency. Okay, so there, those are the example systems that the entity can use. For the labor turnover rate, okay, when we say labor turn turnover, uh, this is the uh, when an employee resigned or get out of the company and until such time that the company will uh, hire another employee, train them and work for them to uh, replace the, the employee who left. Okay, this is labor turnover. So for the rate, we have for the separation and replacement method. For um, separation me method, so the formula is number of separations during the period divided by average of number of workers on the roll times 100. For the replacement method, um, this is equal to the number of workers replaced in a period divided by the average number of workers on the row times 100. But uh, in cost accounting, uh, normally, this type of uh, formula is not commonly used. Labor turnover is most especially important in the human resource department okay? because they handle the uh, the application, hiring, and uh, retirement or separation of the employees. In the cost accounting, what we are after is the labor cost actually that is applied in the production. Okay, so this is just an additional uh, formula for us to know. Okay, so those are for the labor 
costs formula. So here we will continue with the overhead formula. Okay, so for the overhead or factory overhead, you have the following. Um, for overhead recovery rate or overhead absorption rate, so we have this uh, formula that we can use. So this is equal to the amount of overhead incurred divided by the basis for absor absorption. Uh, basically class in overhead costs since these are indirect costs and indirect materials. So meaning we cannot actually associate this directly to the item or the inventory. That's why we need some allocation uh, tools or methods to determine how much of the factory overhead will be uh, allocated for certain inventory. Okay, so that's why we need the basis for the absorption or allocation. Unlike your direct materials and direct labor, we can easily compute the, them according to the number of materials used uh, in the case of labor according to the number of hours or piece the workers have worked for. But in uh, factory overhead, it's um, uh, quite difficult for us to determine how much of those expenses will be applied or uh, added in our manufacturing cost. That's why we need this. Um, we also have here the predetermined overhead rate. So predetermined, this is the standard or planned overhead rate that the entity uh, estimates that they should uh, incur in the next accounting period. So this will be the basis, okay? And will be uh, later on compared with the actual overhead expense that was incurred in the during the year. So if there is difference, we will have the variance. Okay. So for the predetermined overhead rate, our formula is budgeted overhead for the period. Okay, divided by the budgeted uh, basis for the period. We can use the number of units produced, or we can also use the number of hours worked for in the production that's the basis that we can use for the blanket overhead rate okay so this is uh, overhead cost for the entire factory divided by base for the period uh, we can use again either the labor hours or machine hours or other basis for the blanket overhead rate so i uh, this is um the factory overhead that applies generally for example, if the entity is producing more than one product, okay, and they share uh, the, the factory overhead. So, this is what we will use okay, to determine how much of the overhead will be applied for this product and the other product as well. For the multi multiple overhead rate, so this is equal to the overhead allocated divided by the apportioned uh, amount to each department okay and then divide it to the corresponding base multiple overhead rate in this case is um there are factory overhead that comes from i think other department or parts of the organization which will be allocated to our department okay so that's why they pull it together and then divide it Okay, according to the basis that the entity is using to determine how much of this uh, overhead, uh, additional overhead will be charged to the production or to the product. Okay. We also have for our variable overhead in semi-variable overhead. So for variable overhead rate, how do you determine how much is your variable overhead rate? So this is equal to the change in amount of expense divided by the change in activity level or quantity. But um, normally, um, there is a technique that is used to separate variable and uh, fixed cost if the given data is mixed costs. Okay, so we you will learn that I think in management science and uh, in our next modules. Okay, so those are the different uh, and common formulas that are being used in production, specifically for our materials cost, labor cost, and factory overhead costs.